Hi, I'm Dr. Susanna Bazzoni, and we are going to talk about insulin resistance. What is it? And why do we care? Insulin resistance means that insulin is not working effectively on the cell to bring sugar into the cell to be used as fuel, in a nutshell, right? And what is it linked with? Well, insulin resistance is of course linked with type two diabetes, formerly called adult onset, but now we see it so much younger and younger due to our standard American way of life. Unfortunately, that um, we don't call it that anymore, but type two diabetes, but we can also be insulin resistant if we have type one diabetes or type one and a half diabetes, both of which are autoimmune. And that means that our immune system is uh, basically killing off the beta cells in our pancreas, which are meant to make insulin and we can't produce insulin. But yes, we can also have insulin resistance as part of that picture. And why is that important? Because if we address what is causing insulin resistance, even if we're type one or type one and a half, we can lower how much insulin we have to take therapeutically. So that's really powerful, but it doesn't just apply to diabetics. It of course applies to pre-diabetics, but also certain hormonal conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome. It applies to people with high blood pressure, often linked with insulin resistance. It applies to Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's prevention, very closely linked with brain health. And it applies to fatty liver, to just name a few conditions, not all of the conditions that are related to insulin resistance. So fatty liver kind of brings us to the what's driving insulin resistance. And yes, it's true. We want to reduce refined carbohydrates. But when we hear, oh, I'm insulin resistant or I'm diabetic or I have prediabetes, then I got to get rid of carbohydrates and eat a low carbohydrate diet. We are missing the point. And what that does is it buckets carbohydrates into one big evil thing but we're not talking about the packages that food comes in. And food doesn't come in a carbohydrate package and a protein package and a fat package. Food comes with a lot of things within that package and those macronutrients are just a piece of that. And if we don't speak to the micronutrients and to the fiber and the other things in the package, then we're missing the potential long-term detriment or benefit from eating a certain food package. So what do I mean by that and what do we wanna focus on? Well, yes, we want to eliminate or significantly reduce refined carbohydrates and processed foods. This is absolutely true, but we want to look at saturated fat predominantly because that's what is inside the muscle cells, inside the liver cells, that's sending the message that says, I got enough in here, please don't let that sugar in here, I don't have room for you. So we have to clear out that insulin resistance because that saturated fat is what's driving the insulin resistant process. So where does saturated fat come from? Well, it comes from three things I would highly suggest you remove and replace in your diet. One is cheese, 70% saturated fat, so high fat dairy. Uh, one is processed meats and red meats. These really are, are hindering our, pro our progress and will make it so that the cell is full. It won't allow the insulin to work on the insulin receptor to allow sugar into the cell. And then whenever we eat carbohydrates, we falsely blame the sugar sometimes, like the fruit, for example, which isn't the bad guy. In fact, the more particularly low glycemic fruits we eat, like berries and apples and things, the less diabetes we get, right? But if we have fat, particularly saturated fat within the cell, we can't utilize that sugar effectively. So where else is saturated fat? Palm oil and coconut oil. These are not your friends. We wanna clear this out. We wanna replace it with unsaturated fat or better yet with things like plant protein that is high in fiber and low in fat and whole grains. Yes, I said whole grains. Ooh, things like buckwheat, huh, quinoa, rolled oats, right? Or steel cut oats but not refined quick oats, not white rice, things like that will absolutely worsen your diabetes because these are not whole. But what the data shows us is that if we can take the saturated fat and not replace it with low fat snack wells, which will worsen our cardiovascular disease risk if we replace saturated fat with refined carbohydrates, vegan or non-vegan. But if we replace the saturated fat with unsaturated fat like avocados, 
um, that's better if we replace it with things like minimally processed soy, edamame, tofu tempeh, that is better in terms of reducing cardiovascular risk. And if we replace it with things like polyunsaturated fats, ground flax, chia, and whole grains, we significantly reduce our cardiovascular risk. Cardiovascular risk is why we care about insulin resistance. So may you eat foods that are packaged with fiber that helps stabilize your sugar, fuel your microbiome, reduce your risk for many of these long-term outcomes. May you eat foods with packages of low saturated fat, high plant protein, high antioxidants, maybe the color of the rainbow on a bed of greens with a side of beans and don't forget the whole grains. This is how we fight the root drivers of insulin resistance and lead towards a life with less chronic disease, less inflammation, better blood flow, and the most vital form of you. Good luck on your journey. Thank you so much for your time.